When my six month mission was over in 2011, my two Russian crewmates and I got into our Soyuz spacecraft. We undocked from the space station uh, and we had this fiery, violent ride through the atmosphere at five miles a second. The parachutes opened, they threw us all over the place. Eventually, we, we smashed into the ground and we hit so hard that we bounced and we rolled and we flipped over. And now my window was pointed down at the ground and out of my window, I saw a rock, a flower, and a blade of grass. And I thought to myself, I'm home. Home was Earth. What was life like as a child and what were the experiences, the formative experiences that you carry forth to this day? I think at that time, my the, the edge of my universe was the Hudson River. <laughs> so I didn't think that you know anything existed you know beyond New York City. I think about how narrow that perspective was. It was an accurate perspective, it, but it was just a very narrow perspective. Uh, and you know that's why I, I wrote the, the name of my first book was called the Orbital Perspective because perspective is such a powerful tool uh, to to shape real change. You know, Ron, when we look at 2011, which was your big mission to the International Space Station, at that time, China had a relative infancy lunar space program, but in the last couple of weeks has just returned to Earth. Was that surprising to you? Where does that fit in the global landscape? What's surprising is that we don't have many nations <laughs> on the moon. What's surprising is that we don't have a, already have a permanent human presence on the moon and, a, and have established a transportation infrastructure between Earth and our closest neighbor. Uh, I think that's something that we as a species need, need to be doing a lot faster than we're doing for the benefit of all of humanity. That hasn't happened yet with the sole space superpower, which is the United States and a country like China. Do you think that necessarily there is value to that. We've seen them work together, for example, in Ebola against the financial crisis around 2008, 2009. But would a collaboration in the same spirit necessarily benefit humanity? I have, I have no doubt in my mind that that would benefit humanity. I think it's, it's what we need to do for a number of reasons. From a technical point of view, having a different engineering philosophy, having a different engineering perspective leads to better technical solutions. And, and the International Space Station program has proved that over and over again. So bringing in uh, you know, the, the Chinese perspective into the engineering technical solution is gonna be a, a great benefit. It's gonna build redundancy, it's gonna build re resiliency uh, into, into it. But also, going back to what we said before, you know, sharing in the awe and wonder of space exploration naturally unifies people and it naturally allows them to start creating real relationships, real working relationships, real trust, uh, for, and that can be used as a foundation to, to address the things that we disagree on. A proven path to success, a proven path to progress is to find the things that we agree on and, and start to collaborate uh, on those things. It's not impossible to land on the moon and it's not impossible to, to lift every person on the planet out of poverty and to do that in a way that doesn't destroy the planet. With the Apollo program, that was mostly a, a collaboration within the US. Uh, imagine what we can do by collaborating with, with the entire world and, and, the th and the things that we can accomplish. So I think, uh, again, that's it's a shining example of what can be accomplished when we, when we work together. Experience more fascinating stories in Ron Garin's new book, Floating in Darkness, A Journey of Evolution, available now, and listen to our full conversation on the China Current podcast.